So we're going to talk about starting to talk about for about four or five days, we're going to talk about related rates. And related rates is where one rate causes another rate to change. So either increase or decrease. All right. So for this, we just got to jump in and start doing some problems. Okay. And I'll walk, I'll walk us through it and trying to understand like how this is changing. Okay. So the radius R of a sphere is increasing at a rate of two inches per minute. Okay. So we we're talking about the radius of a sphere, which is basically a ball. Okay. And we know is increasing. So it's getting bigger and we know the rate at which it's getting bigger. Okay. So because this is a rate, that is a derivative. Okay. And we'll talk about in just a minute what the derivative is. Right. And then we want to find the rate of change. So how fast is the next thing that we read changing? Okay. So find the rate of change of the volume when the radius is six inches. Now this is gonna be important, okay? So we wanna find how the volume is changing. So that's the derivative of the volume, all right? But we wanna find this at a moment in time, okay? So what we need here is we need a relationship somehow that relates volume and um, radius of a sphere. So we need a relationship between volume and radius of a sphere. Okay, so the relationship, okay? And you don't, I would give this to you. The relationship between volume and a radius is, is the volume formula for a sphere, okay? So the relationship from geometry is the volume is equal to four thirds pi times r cubed. So that relates the radius and the volume. And what we know So we know that the radius is increasing. So that is dr over dt. So the derivative of the radius with respect to time is, and it's increasing, so this is gonna be positive. If it was decreasing, it'd be negative, okay? So this is increasing, so it's gonna be a positive two inches per minute. And what we wanna find is the derivative of the volume with respect to time. So we wanna find dv over dt. We wanna know what that equals, but at a specific moment in time, so it's when r equals six inches. So it might not be always increasing or decreasing at the same rate. So depending on the radius, it might be increasing at a different rate than when the radius was at like three inches compared to six inches. All right. Um, so my point of this is really emphasizing this. You cannot, and I'm going to say this on every single problem, we cannot put six inches right now in here because we haven't taken the derivative yet, okay? And basically, that's what we want to do. We want to take this relationship and we want to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. So we want to take d dt, which is the derivative with respect to time of the volume. And if we do the same thing to the other side, it remains equal. So the derivative with respect to time of four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so this right here becomes my dv dt. So dv dt is equal to, and four thirds, that's a constant, pi is a constant. So this is four thirds pi times, and the derivative of r cubed would be times 3r squared. But, we, and we would end there if we were taking the derivative with respect to the radius, but we're not taking the derivative with respect to the radius, we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So we have to, we have to apply the chain rule here, and that, now that becomes times dr over dt. So we're going to clean this up before we start plugging numbers in. 
So we know dv dt is equal to, um, here my threes are gonna cancel, I'm left with four pi r squared dr over dt. So now I'm gonna be able to, now the, the volume is changing, but it's dependent upon the radius and the rate at which the radius is changing. So it's depend, this is dependent upon the radius and dr dt. So I have to know both of those to figure out the volume change, okay? All right, so putting the numbers in, so dv over dt is equal to four pi times my radius, which would be six inches squared times my um, rate, which the radius is increasing, which is inches per, two inches per minute. And so when we get this, we should get a volume unit, which is a cubic unit over a time unit, okay? So this becomes four pi times, and this six, six squared is 36 inches squared. So 36 inches squared times two inches per minute, okay? And we go to multiply the units, we're gonna get inches cubed per minute, which is a volume over a time unit, okay? And then four pi times 36 gives you 288 pi, um, no, sorry, not 288 pi, um, times the two gives you 288 pi, okay? So four pi times 36 times two gives you 288 pi inches cubed per minute. And so I will also want the approximate. So we put that into our calculator, you know, 288 times pi, and rounded to three decimal places, that'd be 904.779 inches cubed per minute, okay? And we need to write a sentence on this, okay? So the volume is increasing And you know what, I shouldn't have said just volume, the volume of the sphere, so let me fix this. The volume of the sphere is increasing. The volume of the sphere is increasing, and we know it's increasing because we got a positive value, and it's increasing 288 pi inches cubed per minute when the radius is six inches. Okay, so this is gonna seem really difficult at first and you gotta not be afraid to make mistakes. You gotta jump in and just start trying, okay? All right, so let's do the next example. For the second problem, we need to find the rate of change of the distance between the origin. So that's the origin is the point zero, zero, remember? And a moving point on the graph of y equals sine x if dx over dt is equal to two centimeters per second. So this is the change, hor the horizontal change, okay? So we, we gotta look at the, the, we gotta look at the graph of y equals sine x, okay? so. Going back, thinking about the graph of sine x. Okay, right here is zero, zero. Okay, and sine x starts at zero, zero and goes up and then comes back down and then comes back up to the x-axis, okay? And that's one period. And this point right here would be two pi comma zero. And this point right here is pi comma zero. All right, so we wanna find the rate of change of the distance between. So we wanna know how is the distance changing and that distance starts at zero, zero. And then there's this point that's moving on the graph. So it's, it's a point that's just moving along this graph. So I'm gonna put a point on it and I'm gonna label this the distance D, okay? Now, 
how is that? How are we going to use this? Okay. How, how do we calculate the distance between this point and this point? Okay. And that's the distance formula. All right. So that it's basically the, it's basically the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So the distance formula is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay. Now, so we need the coordinates of this point and this point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate and the y coordinate is just the y coordinate that's on this graph and it's always going to be sine x because the relationship says that y is always equal to sine x. And this point right here is the point zero, zero. So plugging all of this in, we get a distance between a point on the graph of y equals sine x and zero, zero. We get a distance between them of x minus zero squared plus, and then be sine x minus this y coordinate, which is zero squared. So sine x minus zero squared. I'm gonna extend my square root. X minus zero is just X and sine X minus zero is sine X. So my distance would be the square root of X squared plus sine squared X. And that's the relationship, okay? Um, I'm gonna write this with exponents. So square root is really a one half exponent because I'm gonna be able to do calculus with it. So the distance is equal to the square root. Uh, I started to write square root after I just said, write it as a fractional exponent, right? Okay, so this becomes x squared plus sine squared x raised to the one half power. All right, so this is our relationship that we need. So we need the distance relationship because we wanna see how that's changing, okay? So we wanna find dd over dt, okay? And we know that dx over dt is equal to two centimeters per second. So two centimeters per second. I'm gonna write second SEC. Um, And, be, and because it was just given straight to us, right? So we want to relate, okay, because we're given this derivative of dx, d, d, dx over dt, we want a formula that relates x and d. And that's what this is right here, right? This is a relationship that relates my x coordinate to the distance, okay? So now it's a matter of taking the derivative of this and then just plugging everything in, okay? So d dt, the derivative with respect to time of d is equal to d dt of, and it'd be x squared plus sine squared x raised to the one half. All right. And so this left side becomes d d, d capital D over dt. And this, we're going to apply the power rule along with the chain rule, okay? So one half, this becomes one half times x squared plus sine squared x raised to the negative one half. And then times, and then we got to take the derivative of this inside function, which would be 2x times dx over dt plus, okay, so this is really, remember sine squared x is sine, sine of x in parentheses squared. So this becomes two times sine of x times cosine of x because the inside function is, the outside function is a squaring function. Inside that we have the sine x function. And so this is the derivative of the inside function. This right here is the derivative of the squaring function, and then times the inside of this function, which would be dx over dt. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I know that this is two, right? Because we now that we've taken the derivative, we can plug anything we want to in, okay? So this becomes d d over dt is equal to one half times, and this is really, this becomes right here, one over the square root of x squared plus sine squared x times, and this becomes 2x times 2 plus 2 sine x cosine x times 2. Because, and the reason is dx over dt is 2. I know that from right here. Okay, so then that makes dd over dt. I'm going to slide it up a little bit equal to one half times one over the square root of x squared plus sine squared x times, and then two x times two is four x, and two times sine x times cosine x times two is plus four sine x cosine x. And so this would be the derivative of the distance with respect to time. And multiplying this out, right, this would be 1 times 1, which is this, and then times this. So the numerator is 4x plus 4 sine of x cosine of x all over 2 square roots of x squared plus sine squared x. Okay, so what this is, is we can determine the rate at which the distance between um, the origin and a point on this graph by just knowing the x, and I can plug it in, right? And this will tell me how it's changing, okay? All right, and, it, and since distance is going to be measured in centimeters, the units with this would be centimeters per, and our time unit is seconds. So it would continue to be centimeters per second. All right? This is, you have a similar problem on your homework like this, okay? That's why I pulled this out, okay? This, of, of all the examples I'm doing today, this is actually probably the hardest one, okay? And it's just in this derivative work, okay? All right, so just realize that this relationship is, comes from the distance formula, all right? And by plugging the numbers in for x and for sine x and zero, right? We wind up with this relationship. And then just by taking the derivative of that, I'm going to get dd over dt, and then over on this side, dx over dt. Okay. All right. So for this next one, okay, it's, we have a pebble, it's dropped into a calm pond, okay, causing ripples in the form of concentric circles. So it's like you drop, you drop something and it spreads out. Okay. And so it's, it's forming these concentric circles. All right, so like here's where we drop it. And then we have the circle around and this circle. And it's just the disturbance of the water around it, okay? And they just keep spreading out. And those are supposed to be circles, okay? <laughs> All right, so pebbles dropped into a calm pond causing ripples in the form of concentric circles. That's what we have here. The radius R of the outer ripple is increasing at a rate of one foot per second, okay? So the radius is increasing. So it's getting bigger at a constant rate of one foot per second. Okay, because this is a rate, right? That's a derivative, okay? So we know, one thing that we know from this reading this is that dr over dt that dr over dt is the rate at which the radius is increasing or decreasing, okay? It's the rate at which the radius is changing. And we know that it's increasing, so that's going to be positive. And we know it's one foot per second. So one foot per second, okay? When the radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing okay so what we want to do is we want to find the rate at which the area is changing and so a is area so we need to find da over 
dt. And that's what we're trying to find. And what we want, we want to find this when the radius is exactly four feet. So when r equals four feet. Okay, so we need to come up with a relationship, right? So a lot of times this is going to be the hardest one, all right, um, to figure out. So what we want to do is because we have dr over dt and we're trying to find da, da over dt, we want to find a way of relating the area of these circles with the radius. And we should know. Now, this is one you should know. I would never give to you because you need to know what the area of a circle is. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the relationship that we're going to use is a is equal to pi r squared. Because if I take the derivative with respect to time, this left side, I'm going to get a dA over dt, which is what I'm trying to find. And over here on the right-hand side, using the chain rule and, and power rule and the other derivatives, I'm going to pick up, I have to pick up a dr over dt, okay? So that's, that's the idea behind it is I want to I wanna come up with a relationship that deals with my area and my radius. And that's the relationship right there, pi r squared, okay? So I want to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. So d dt of a is equal to d dt of pi r squared. So this left-hand side becomes dA over dt. And this is a, pi is a constant, so that's pi times 2r raised to the first power times in the derivative, right, of r with respect to time. So that'd be dr over dt. Okay, so then my dA over dt, putting everything in that I know, I know that's pi times 2 times r, which is 4 feet, times my dr over dt, which is 1 foot per second, And so right here, I get feet squared. And that should be the unit for area, right? And the denominator is going to be seconds. So it's feet, my units are going to be feet squared per second, which is the change in area over a change in time unit, okay? So cleaning this up, pi times 2 times 4 would, times 1 gives you 8 pi. So dA over dt is equal to 8 pi feet squared per second, which is about 25.133, putting that in your calculator, feet squared per second, okay? So the total area of the disturbed water is increasing this 25.133. When you go to write your, your final sentence, okay, you can use either the exact or the approximate. It doesn't matter to me, okay? So the total area of the disturbed water is increasing twenty five point one three three feet squared per second when the radius. So it's not always going to be this. It's only this because this, this is dependent on the, how, the rate at which the radius is changing and also the radius. So that rate is going to be different when this radius is different. Okay. So um, is increasing 25.133 feet squared per second when the radius is four feet. Okay, and that's example three. All right, that was the relationship was easy to pull or easier to pull out of this. Okay, all right. Okay, so for this last example in chemistry and physics, 
Okay. Boyle's law describes the relationship between pressure and volume of a fixed gas. Okay. Where it's maintained, where the, the temperature is maintained at a constant temperature. So the temperature doesn't change because then that would change us to PV equals NRT. If you remember that. Okay. The law states that PV equals K. So pressure times volume is equal to K. The P stands for pressure and the V stands for volume. K is a constant. So we got to realize, okay, that's like a number. That's like number, that's like a five or something. Okay. And P is the pressure of the gas and V is the volume. Like I said, a sample of gas is placed in a cylindrical piston. At the beginning of the experiment, the gas occupies a volume of 250 cubic centimeters. Okay, so we know the volume. That's what that's telling us. And it has a pressure of 100 kilopascals. So K here stands for kilo, kilopascals, which is a, a, a unit for pressure, okay? And then the piston is slowly compressed, decreasing the volume of the gas at a rate of 50 cubic centimeters per minute. So that's, that is going to be dV dt because that's telling us, and it's going to be negative because it's decreasing. All right. So a few things we know. Let's start writing these things down. Um, we know volume is 250 cubic meters. Okay. And you know what? I should have finished answering this. Okay. How quickly will the pressure of the gas initially increase. So how quickly is a, is a rate, okay? So we're finding the rate of change of the pressure, okay? So what we know, we know, sorry, I get ahead of my, my brain gets ahead of myself, okay? We know that the volume is 250 cubic centimeters, And we know we have a pressure of 100 kilopascals. The piston is slowly compressing it. Okay, so the volume is getting, it has, if it's compressing, it's got to be getting smaller. Okay, and so it's decreasing the, the, decreasing the, decreasing the volume of the gas at a rate of 50 cubic centimeters per minute. So this is V, this is P and this right here is dV dt. So we know it's decreasing at a rate of 50 cubic centimeters per minute. So dV over dt is equal to negative, negative again because of the decreasing, and it's 50 cubic centimeters per minute. Okay. So how quickly will the pressure of the gas initially increase? So we want to find, all right, and what we want to find is um, dP dt. Okay, so when all of this happens, we want to find what this is, okay? So what's great about this problem is you don't have to figure out the relationship. It was already given to us, PV equals K the pressure, the volume, right? We want to relate volume and pressure, right? V and P, because we have the, the rate at which the volume is changing and we want to find the rate at which the pressure is changing. So we want something that relates pressure and volume, okay? And that's really all there is to this is you got to figure out, okay, what rates have I been given? And then from that, what's the relationship that I can write that would allow me to figure the other one out, okay? So the relationship is that the pressure times the volume is equal to some constant K. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of this, and this is going to be a product. So I'm going to have to take the product rule of this, all right? And this is a constant. So when I go to take the deriv derivative of this, it's going to wind up being zero, okay? So when I go to take the derivative, with respect to time of PV, the left-hand side, and I take the derivative with respect to time of the constant K. This, I'm gonna to have to apply the, the product rule. So the derivative of the first, right, which is dP dt, dP over dt, times the volume plus the pressure P times the derivative of V, which is dV over 
dt is equal to, and you've got to realize that this k right here is a constant, so that's going to be zero. And so we could, if we wanted to, solve it for dp dt. Okay, so we could move these over and divide by v and get it, or you could just plug the numbers in. Okay, so we're trying to find this one. So dp over dt times the volume, which we know at this moment in time when we're trying to figure this out, the volume is 250 cubic centimeters. So that'd be 250. I'm just gonna write the numbers and we'll put the units later on, okay? And then plus the pressure, well, I know the pressure is 100. And then I know the volume, the rate at which the volume is changing is negative 50. And that's equal to zero. So this would be um, 250 dp over dt. I'm just changing the order on that one. And because this is adding and we're multiplying a positive times a negative, this is going to be minus. And 50 times 100 would be 5,000 equals zero. So moving the 5,000 over, I get 250 dp over dt is equal to 5,000. And then divide by 250 and we'll have it. So dp over dt is equal to, and 5,000 divided by 250 is 20. Now, I didn't put the units in here, okay? So we have to figure out, okay, so what are our pressure units? Okay, because that's what our, the units for our numerator is gonna be. And our pressure is being measured in kilopascals, right? So this is 20 kilopascals over in our time unit. Now, what's our time unit? Well, if you look over here, our time unit is in minutes. So this is kilopascals per minute. So as you squeeze this gas, right? Because the gas is being compressed. So it's being squeezed on, right? The volume is decreasing. And from chemistry, you guys should realize that, okay, if the volume's decreasing, that means the pressure is going to have to go up. So the moment that um, it's decreasing at 50 cubic centimeters per minute up here, right? We know the pressure is increasing 20 kil kilopascals per minute, okay? So the pressure... of the gas will initially increase. Okay, so why is it increasing? Because this is positive and it's 20 kilopascals per minute. Okay, and you guys, that's our first day of related rates, okay? This is a really, um, I think this is a really, really good problem. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit if I can. Okay, I would put an asterisk on this, okay? Here's, here's why. I'm gonna tell you this is a fairly simple problem. And the reason it's a fairly simple problem is you do not have to figure out the relationship. On one of the questions on the, this next test, I'm going to give you one similar to this where I've given you the relationship and you just got to plug everything in and do the derivative. Okay. Kind of like, kind of like this one, not exactly, but kind of like this one, you have another one um, on your homework that's going to um, deal with um, kinetic energy. Um, and that's, that's mass and volume is involved in that one. Okay. Or mass and volume, mass and velocity. Okay. All right. So you're going to, all you don't have to know physics. You really don't even have to know chemistry to do this, um, but it, it does help, but you don't have to have taken physics. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. Okay. For today.